Hey everyone. Uh, so I've been uh, messing about with Blitz a bit recently. I've not made as much uh, daily content as I normally did, normally have done. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, playing the 1510. I got um, a message from Coach Mike saying stop playing, stop playing five minute games. You're not going to learn your new repertoire properly by just blitzing out opening. So here we go. I am now gambling my 1600 rating, um, and we're get, we're, but we're going to play the new repertoire, okay? So with white, this means the Van Geet with knight c3, okay? Now here, the, and this is what's kind of interesting about this. So it's a bit like the Reti, you know, the Reti can go into lots and lots of many things, but the Van Geek with bringing the Queen's Knight out first instead of the King's Knight can also go into many, many different things. For example, e4 here would take us straight into a Vienna. Okay. Um, but I'm going to play Knight f3 to avoid the Vienna. Now, the Vienna is something that I'm quite familiar with. And here I, can, here I have d4. Okay. So how many times is my opponent going to have seen this? Very rarely. So d4 is defended by knights, defended by queen. And this is the Napoleon attack in the reverse. Nimzovic. This is not the same as the, the regular Napoleon attack, which is like e4, e5, isn't it? Queen f3, something like that, which is dubious. This is also called the Napoleon attack. And I looked up to see if there's anything on this yesterday, and I couldn't couldn't find anything on it. And here black is clearly already worse. Why are they worse? Well, I've got two pieces out on the board. Now, I do need to take care of my queen, but this move seems to make a bunch of sense because not only am I pinning the knight to black's queen, I'm also preparing to long castle, get my rook onto the semi-open uh, d-file. And I see... So if I, take, if I go there, if he takes, the, then we, we have the problem that he can recapture with the boomerang recapture. So I don't want, I'm, go, I'm going to castle, I think, here. And this is the way to learn properly. So last night, for example, I played, if I put my, uh, my profile, okay, we have castles from black. But black is, you know, I've got the three pieces out on the board. He's got one and a bit, really. Yeah. So what did I do last night? Yeah. So I was, I was kind of doing well, and then I just kept on playing and got a draw and two losses. This is all in blitz. You know? So I did play a bunch of games yesterday. So I got back, I got, I got up to, back to 1450, um, and then let it slip again. Okay, so we take stock. So this, this doesn't really count as pressure right now. Okay, not, not significantly. So what I need to be thinking about doing is how am I going to attack my opponent? I think it moves like h4, pretty obvious. We've got an opposite side castles uh, set up. I also want to get this bishop out into the board. So maybe, maybe move e4 now. I think makes a lot of sense. It's more control over d5. Um, if I was to take, take... I could trade queens, bring his bishop back to there. If he takes, but then I, I haven't got really any means to recapture. It takes, you know, let's say everyone dies. I've, I've lost this pawn for no, no real benefit. Um, so f3 has some sense to it. It takes away this square from the knight. f4... Could be an idea. F4 prepares E5. And that feels a bit more front foot to me. I also quite like H4, just because it's me old mate Harry. We could have G3, F4, E5. G3 leaves the hole here, which my opponent is not going to exploit because the queen currently defends F2. Should we go f4? Am I worried about cutting off my bishop's escape? f4, 
kicks. I can come back. I can also trade off, of course. At some point, it's going to be time for this knight to come in and join the fray. Um, H4 is kind of safer. I can retreat this way. I wouldn't mind too much seeing this move. But then the problem is, if my bishop can't come back on this diagonal, I'm not really going to be able to attack that hook. If my bishop's come this way, he's confined to this diagonal rather than this diagonal. So with that in mind, I think h4 right now. And there we have it. There we have the kick. So now I'm thinking I'm going to come back to one of these two squares. Probably then going to push these pawns. This bishop might come maybe to here. I think e3. e3 so it's not in the way of any pawns. Looks fine to me. And it's rated 1495 from India. Okay. Okay, so he's hassling my bishop. Now my bishop and my queen defend f2, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, he's also attacking this twice. I didn't consider that move. Now this bishop's quite useful in the sense that it can sacrifice itself for the h6 hook pawn. If I drop the bishop back to d2, he still can't take here because queen defends. And I think that with an open board, right, like there's nothing on the fifth rank, for example. So the, the pawns are not in contact with each other. I think on an open board, what I should be doing here is maintaining the bishop, keep the bishop pair. He could take here. That's not the end of the world. Right, he decides to pressurize the queen. I have this, which is lined up with the king. I have this, which abandons that pawn. Well, they both do, actually. I have this. If bishop takes... Still can't defend the pawn. <sighs> Frustrating. Problem is, that if I allow his knight here, he wins more material with the rook fork. Bentley, stop it. Which is annoying. Opponent's also playing quickly. I can't come here and defend the pawn. I can't go there or there or defend the pawn. So there's no safe squares for my queen on this diagonal defending the pawn. Which is annoying. What I don't want to do is go there really. Not that it makes a massive difference. I think just here. The bishop can come out maybe that way. We lose an exchange here. All good learning though. Lemon tea. So yeah, I'm also, um, this is day 46 of my 90 day challenge of having no sugar, carbs, alcohol, coffee. That was a 30 second think. Interesting. Because the thing is, he's got these rooks at his mercy, so he doesn't actually have to. And instead of taking a rook, he's taken the bishop, which is odd. Because 
because now he's only up a pawn. But he does have the bishop pair. That hangs. Rook here. I have this, I have this. I do have to save squares. Do I want to take out that pawn though? That's the question. Is my queen likely to get trapped? I could come here and drop her in there, but then that's that's a very in, inert place for the queen to be. I think I can probably grab the pawn back. Okay. Let's come back here and uh, attack this one. Okay, that's the discovered defence from the Queen. This puts two attackers on d6, which could be handy. So at any point he tries to attack my Queen, I can take there. Actually, that would hang the Knight. Um, I take the pawn here, here, just don't want to get trapped in there by being greedy, there, there, come back, I think I might be alright. Thing is, he can't bring in Rook num Oh dear. Oh dear. Right. Okay. Important thing. Let's examine the opening. Yeah, 89.8 accuracy for my opponent. 2,000 rating. Yeah. Did feel a little bit... A bit whiffy. Okay, so this is, this is all normal. Good. Book. Book. Not the best. Okay, so here I'm better. And here my opponent is, is definitely making his own moves, for sure. Right, bishop g5, the pin. Not the best. 0.3 of a pawn difference, striking in the centre. Well, not striking as much as, as, as claiming, claiming space in the centre. Okay. So this is the Napoleon attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the PGN, not all that nonsense, or not all the headers. I'm going to grab this bit of it. Okay, I'm going to go to my Nimzovich uh, study. Napoleon attack. Okay, I'll bring in the whole game. I'll bring in, bring in 10 moves anyway. Oops. Okay. So, oh, I won't have to set it to be from White's perspective. Okay, and two knights. Now, I'd imagine this is quite rare, okay? So let's look at this. Right, so this is set at, well, set at 1800, 2000, okay, on Lee Chess. So, the game hasn't started yet. We've got 925 million games, okay? Now, one knight c3 is right down here, playing 0% of the time. That takes us from 925 million to 3 million. So, one in three hundred games starts this way. That's that's one of the points. So your opponent is already having to think on his feet. Knight f6 is the second played move, so now we're under one million games played from this point. And best pie test here is the move e4. Okay, e4 takes us into a Vienna. Well, it, I mean, it could do. It could do if they if they play e5. Um, oh, hang on. No, he didn't play knight f6, did he? He did not play knight f6. Knight f6 is the second most common move. He plays knight c6, which is rare. Okay. 
Hang on. Okay. Now he plays knight c6. Okay, so, right, forgive me. Knight c6 is the most common move. Obviously, right, I'm attacking this pawn. So this is like a... a it, so this is like... But I've not played e4, even. That, that's the trick. This is why it's all so confusing. Okay, he plays knight c6, the most common move, right? And now it is d4. D4 with 57% win rate, okay? Good control over d4, play it, right? This is my note to self. Oh, I need to check that I've got it set to interactive lesson, I do. Okay, most common move by a mile is e takes d4, which is what we have. And of course, I'm not gonna leave any comments for that. We're just gonna trade off. Now this I think was inaccurate. If knight takes, it's inaccurate. Just check with the engine. Plus 0.9, yeah, you know. Okay, and here, here you remember it, I said, in, in the live game, we're already better, okay? Opponent plays knight f6, this, this is fine. Also slightly inaccurate though. And in actual fact, the most commonly played move is indeed bishop g5 with a 60% win rate. But there's also knight b5. Knight b5 is, is, a, is a cheeky stunt, okay? So yeah, you're looking down at c7, which is obviously defended by the queen, but you also then have a check. So let's throw in the cheeky knight b5. And let's see what they do at this level. Okay, computer doesn't like it. Most common move is a6 and then bishop b7. They account for more than half the moves played, or c6. Okay, so if a6, I think the move is, is one of these. Yeah, that's, no, it's queen e5, because, and this is just winning. This is just winning, right? Because what can they do? If bishop e7, Knight takes c7, the king has to move, right? Let's go, let's go back a little bit. So this is Napoleon attack traps. Okay, bishop e7 is actually his best try. Bishop e7 is fine. In which case we bring in more reinforcements. Okay, right. Pile more pressure against c7 with development. And yeah, this is, you know, this is pretty hard for them to navigate. So we, d6, very obvious move. Now, most here players here with the white pieces, long castle, that is not the best. Computer says e4. Played 14 times, 50, 50 win rate. Queen c4, only been played seven times. So here, you know, basically it's play on from this position. You know, play on. Yeah, most people do short castle. Computer says e4. Okay, but if we go back again, if they don't play either of these moves, what about what about c6? Because c6 is also common, but actually a blunder. Wow. Oops. Okay, so this this is a blunder. So we'll call it a blunder. Because now we have queen four on king and c7. X clam. Right now, if c6 is played, also a blunder because we then still have queen e5. Okay, same response, still have queen e5, and again, he's faced with the same choice blocking with a queen, blocking with a bishop. Either way, he can't stop the knight from coming in there. Um, very nasty indeed, precious, very nasty. In fact, the knight gets to go in there. Well, he can't, he's got to block with something. There's only two legal moves and neither of them is is interesting. Okay, so what, what did we, how did we deviate from that game then? After queen here, okay, we had knight f6. Okay, so here I just played the pin but there is this whole trappy line with knight b5. 
Okay, and this this is how I'm going to improve. Right, this is how I'm going to go from sixteen hundred to seventeen hundred. Well, first I've got to get back to sixteen hundred, obviously. You know, but it's it's the analysis when you go over your games in in a little more depth. Okay, so um, here Bishop G five is tempting and most often played, but there's a trappy line. Okay. Other other moves are e4, which I think is the engine's recommendation. Yes, you know. Um, engine likes e4 and g4. So these are all good. So white was just better here. So let's see actually where I went wrong. Okay, so I did this. This is inaccurate, right? Slightly inaccurate. But again, white white does very, very well from this position. Okay. So he, he breaks the pin on the knight. Fair enough. Do I play e4 now? I castled. Castled is fine. White still wins 63% of the time at the strong intermediate level. Castles is not a bad move. He castles. White is still better. Now I play e4, which is still winning 64% of the time. So according to real world practice, the game that I played up to this point was excellent. We have d6, again, the most commonly played move. And now e5. e5 is most often played with a 62% win rate. f3, e5, and f4. I played h4, which also does very well. But remember, we had a we had a discussion about this. E five is the most pressuring here, because after they take, we can re recapture with a discovery. So that takes and Queen H four are really the only moves here. Now, according to the engine, Queen H four is equal, so you have to take. Okay, he moves over to the side. Played more than half the time. And this is a mistake, <clears throat> giving up this pawn. Okay. So there we go, right? We've now got something we can study from here. So now what I can do is drill it, okay? So we're playing the fungi. And the octopus here is reminding me two knights. Okay, good control over d4, play it. Everyone dies. Now this knight comes out, and we said that this is tempting. Um, engine likes e4 and g5, g4. Okay, but we're going to play this tricky one. It says let's throw in the cheeky knight b5, and then doesn't let me. Okay, knight b5 promote to. Okay, promote variation. Right, forgive me. Let's go back to the start. And I'm showing this in in exhaustive detail because this is the practice that, that I want to be adopting and, and I suggest that you do as well. And, and this is what I love about the, the Lee Chess studies, how it lets you just drill this stuff over and over again. Okay, and now we go cheeky. And I don't think this is dangerous. Okay, so now it's the queen fork. Okay, and whatever they do, bang. Okay, we're done. Now, what it doesn't do <coughs> is then say, okay, we've got multiple lines in this. Do you want to try line number two, line number three, line number four? That would be amazing. A real, real boon to the Leach studies. Because what I find I have to do then is take every single independent line and make a new chapter with those lines. But let's play it again, right? Two knights. And he's already out of his out of his uh, comfort zone here, and we just go in with that. And it's the same if he does this, no, nope. this and bang. King has to move. It's not guy, not good. Yeah. So there you go. That is the Napoleon attack, right? And and now, if I was just playing Blitz and I was playing twenty games a day, right? I wouldn't remember that at all. So Mike's right. Mike's quite right. 
um, it's important to study it. And that is how I'm just adding one brick to the wall, right? I'm building the, the Hadrian's Wall here. Okay, not the Great Wall of China. Hadrian's Wall, very important. Romans didn't like the Scots at all. They'd conquered everybody. But when they got to Scotland, they went, hell no. These guys, these ginger, hairy-arsed, bad mofos are too much for us. Let's build a wall to keep them out. So kudos to the to the Scots there. Yeah, but this you know this is fun. You you're going to get this. You're going to get this quite frequently. So let's, let's just let's just go back. Like I say, okay. Now from here, so knight f6 very common, and I know I've had this position more than once. I could check the uh, the opening explorer. Um, Knight f6 is played two thirds of the time. Okay, so here, knight b5 has a 72% win rate. Okay, now it goes from plus 1.5 to plus 0.2. So it is technically inaccurate, or as Leeches wants to call it, dubious. Okay, the best response here is bishop e7. If they find bishop e7, we can explore this a little bit. Bishop e7. Here it says c4, but it's only been played eight times. But white has won seven of those games. Um, hmm. Let's just see what happens, just for giggles. c4. They castle or they play a6. Castles are better, according to the engine. And here, white has won three out of six games. So I don't, I don't get that. I just don't get that. So the computer here says bishop f4. We'll go with the computer recommendation in this case because the numbers are so low, right? They always play d6. Ninety-four percent of the time, they play d6. And then, then it is saying e4. Computer says e4, which is better than castles. Right. Push in the center. Hold off from castling. Okay. And because I've made that arrow, that arrow will actually appear when I when I drill it as well. Now the most common move is a6. 15 games, white has won 10 of them. Okay, we next move is obvious, so we're not going to leave a, a note, just retreat. Now they castle. And now we castle. Now castle and play on. Right. And but this is this is in, in the case of the best defense. So even then, you know, we, we've got a good fighting chance here. And that is the important thing. So join me tomorrow for more fun of the same as we uh, start to build this new and exciting repertoire, which can go in so many different directions. That's the beauty of it, right? Black doesn't know what the hell to do on, on move one. He doesn't. All right, let's look. D5 played 27% of the time, okay? Now after D5, I guess we can do the same. After d5, we have e5, I think. So look at this. You know, I'm already like... You know, not remembering all the things. But knight f6 is the second place, second most played move at 21%. Come on, D, what did you do after d5? I know it's not d4. Right, I understand what I've done wrong. I've pasted this into my Nimzovich study, which is for white. So excuse me. I've put it into my Nimzovich study, so I'm going to copy the PGN. 
I'm going to delete that chapter altogether, right? I'm going to go into my Van Geet study and I'm going to paste it into where it should be, right? Congratulations, well done to anyone who, uh, who picked up on that little blunder. All right, now we have the Napoleon attack in the Van Geet. Okay, so D5. Yeah, we meet it with E4. If they advance, then we do very much like the Black Knight's Tango. We swing the knight around. We're going to get this knight out. We're going to develop this bishop to c4. We're going to push this. We're going to develop this bishop. You know, very, very simple. And you're playing the same kind of opening um, from both sides of the board, which I like. Same kinds of ideas. So, uh, yeah, all good. Anyway, hope that's uh, interesting and helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.